Stephanie Belflant joins us now to talk about a new procedure in Jackson for heart problems. If you have questions, please send them to the doctors at WLBT.com. Stephanie. Thank you, Maggie. Joining us is Dr. Michael Bensler. He is with Baptist Cardiology Clinic. Thank you so much. And um, as he describes himself, he's a, a cardi cardiovascular electrician, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> he does ablation surgeries, or a lot of them. And uh, we've, you've got new equipment now that you're working with that is almost completely the opposite of what you've previously been working with. That's correct, Stephanie. We, uh, most of our atrial fibrillation ablation procedures was done with typical uh, radio frequency current, which is a, a standard traditional ablation energy where you actually heat or you cook the tissue to destroy the abnormal focus. Well, now we have a new catheter that actually uses liquid nitrogen inside the catheter, which actually freezes or cools the tissue to minus 45, minus 50 degrees Celsius so that we can actually use that for ablation. Wow, now we're calling this a cold therapy. What's the difference? It, how is it better for the patient than what you've used in the past? Well, in particular with atrial fibrillation, when you use a radio frequency current to ablate the tissue, you can actually disrupt the inner lining of the heart or the endocardium. Uh, with cryoablation, you actually can still ablate or destroy the tissue, but you actually don't disrupt the inner lining. So there's less of a chance of thrombus or blood clot formation. Now, blood clots after the ablation is a complication that you worry about because it can actually lead to a stroke after the procedure. And with this procedure, there's less of a risk of blood clot formation. There's also less of a risk of damaging the food tube or the esophagus, which runs directly behind the heart with this particular type of procedure. Well, before we get into some questions, um, is every heart patient a, a good candidate for this? Well, patients that actually should be selected for cryoablation for atrial fibrillation are patients that have failed an antiarrhythmic medication, a medication that it, the goal is to keep the patient in a normal rhythm. So if a patient has actually failed an antiarrhythmic medication and he or she is having significant symptoms such as shortness of breath, lightheadedness, fatigue, uh, any symptoms related with atrial fibrillation, those are the patients that are good candidates. And would you kind of explain what atrial fib is in terms of the, it's an electrical conduit system, it's, it's a disturbance in the electrical system of the heart or Absolutely. whatever? Absolutely. Atrial fibrillation is a irregular, chaotic, disorganized beating of the top left chamber of the heart. It actually involves both of the top chambers, but uh, this disorganized uh, electrical activity inside the heart doesn't lead to a synchronized contraction, but the heart kind of quivers or fibrillates. And with that loss of synchronized contraction, the heart doesn't pump blood as effectively. And so patients can have all sorts of symptoms. The most feared complication of atrial fibrillation is you can actually get blood clots that form on the sides of the heart while the heart is fibrillating. And so that's another reason to get a patient out of atrial fibrillation. And ablation and does that. Absolutely. Okay, here's a heart question. My father's heart stopped suddenly when he was in his late 30s. The doctor had to place a pacemaker in him. Is this hereditary, and how can I be tested to see if this could happen to me? He was not overweight. He was extremely healthy and very active. Well, certain patients can have uh, predisposing conditions that can actually cause heart block, which is treated with a pacemaker. There are some syndromes that are pretty rare where certain diseases that run in families can actually lead to heart block. But probably the most common cause of heart block is just a, uh, what we call idiopathic, meaning we don't really know why it happens, but just as the conduction system ages and starts to get more scarred and fibrotic, the conduction system just peters out. Now it's a little abnormal that this happened at such an early age, mm -hmm. uh, but this is a patient that probably needs to be checked for some of these rare syndromes. Uh, if these rare syndromes are actually passed on uh, to the offspring, the kids, mm -hmm. then they could probably be screened as well. Good advice. Okay. Excellent. Right. Thank you so much. You bet. It's just wonderful to know all the new advances that we have in treating heart attacks and heart conditions. So thank you. you bet. My pleasure. Dr. Mike Bensler with Baptist Cardiology Clinic. Thank you so much. And for more health news, you can log on to our website. Just go to WLBT.com and click on Medical Matters.